guest for today is Finn Kelly, great guy, great advisor, master of the niche. Uh, he's been niching down since the first time I ever heard about Finn Kelly and the wealth enhancers. Great to always pick his brain, very bright guy. Obviously thinks about things super progressively, um, very different to a lot of advisors, but thinks the way to go is to pick your exact target market, become an expert and help them with really in-depth and personal style of financial advice we actually go into how a lot of this stuff used to be handled by the priest or, or like the pastor uh, and now it's become the role of the financial advisor if you choose to go down this path so lots of really good takeaways we are both presenting at the wealth enhancers coaching academy which is probably the last time it's on i just found out hopefully it's got nothing to do with the fact that i'm presenting there as well very much looking forward to sharing figuring out what it is that you want to talk about and then you know packaging and scaling your personality and your professional knowledge and putting it out at scale so hopefully you enjoy Hub24 is an ASX-listed company with over $10 billion funds under management and one of the fastest-growing platforms in the market. Neither a bank nor part of a bank, Hub24 focuses entirely on connecting advisors to a broad range of investment solutions for their clients. Discover why other advisors think Hub24 are the best in the market and access the benefits of choice and efficiency for you and your clients with their market-leading managed portfolio solution. To find out more, visit hub24.com.au. Good morning, Vietnam. No, sorry, I always wanted to start a podcast with that. And the fact <laughs> that you're in Vietnam made it uh, doable. Uh, Finn Kelly, how are you doing, mate? I'm doing sensational, Clayton. Look at my backdrop. It's pretty nice right now. <laughs> uh, it's, it's nice. I've, uh, had a, I've been a week in Asia. I was at this global leadership conference for entrepreneurs organization where all the presidents and boards um, come together and we were stuck in a hotel for four days with no sun or anything and it's like i just needed to get some sun so i'm very happy is that is that a pool in your backyard i see yeah it is it's a silly <laughs> silly villa it's pretty nice <laughs> man that is awesome um uh, so i guess it would have been about 18 yeah it was 18 months ago when i went to vietnam and I got engaged there on uh, on a rooftop. It is, it, funnily enough, in a really nice rooftop bar in Ho Chi Minh. Um, in in the in the city there, there's like this restaurant that's completely black. Like it's completely dark, okay. and you can't see anything, and you have to rely on you know your taste because it's a restaurant. Um, and and I, I, I was, cause in my mind, I was like, I think I'll, I'm going to propose in this restaurant. And in my mind, it was really romantic. But then when I was sitting, <laughs> when I was sitting in the dark and I can't see, you know, Vera, I was like, no, this is, this is just not a great idea. So, you know, we got a little bit boozy over lunch and then we walked out and I was standing on the streets and I sort of looked up uh, and saw what I thought was a nice, nice rooftop bar. And then we got up there and it was exquisite and we're the only people up there and i gave my phone to the bartender and i said mate just take a picture of us and i dropped to the knee and uh and i'll never forget it, it like you know vera's like oh, her she starts crying and the guy the guy with who was holding my phone goes oh so romantic <laughs> like, <laughs> in his vietnamese accent it was just brilliant you are romantic <laughs> it's beautiful to see yeah 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 oh man well um Thanks for coming back on the podcast. Um, we've we've been sort of having some chats, and uh, you know you, you're coming back to Australia to to do some uh, some coaching courses, with, which I'm involved in there. Really looking forward to that. Um, but I, I got to ask, what are your plans for the US? So my plans for the US are just to keep observing and look for the market opportunity. I've been doing a lot of benefit of living in Colorado. You get to observe what's happening. Mm. And there's some major trends which are different from Australia in some regards in the financial services space. One is they're used to having financial advisors um, compared to Australia. So, you know, in Australia, there's this, um, our competitor is not other financial advisors. It's the fact that no one has financial advisors. Where in America, they're used to it. So there's an opportunity there. But they're definitely looking for more like coaching and behavioral mindset side type of things. They've got their investment type side of things down pat, but they want help. And I'm seeing that because I'm doing a lot of keynotes over there right now. And everyone's going like, I'm earning this incredible money. 
but I don't know where it's going and I don't know what to do. And they're a lot more open to that. But I think they're more of a self-help uh, economy. So it's, there's a lot of opportunity. And I think where we'll end up going is doing what pretty much digitizing what we're already doing and then selling it to America. I feel like that's probably the path. Yeah. Um, I read earlier today and I did a little uh, LinkedIn video uh, Emily at Which are going great, by the way. Ah, Your yeah, LinkedIn videos you. are sensational. I'm very impressed. Yeah, it's um, it's a whole other thing. I, I don't, I don't exactly know why. Uh, Emily's nicknamed him hashtag Ugg mugs for ugly mugs. So I just, I do, mm-hmm. I do my three weekly ugly mugs, my Ugg mugs. Um, but uh, so I, I did a video on this today. Um, it's called, well, like, sorry, not called. It was about the topic of. Charles Schwab, and I still don't know how to say that properly, but um, though it's a multi-trillion dollar manager, right? And I've read it a million times uh, how big these guys are. And I, what I didn't know is they had a, um, a financial planning service attached to their robo tool, which they've now reduced the costs down to $300 up front and $30 a month ongoing. Now, you, from what I can tell, you don't get the same... Uh, financial planner. If you call up, you get access to a CFP. Mm-hmm. Essentially, that's the um, that's the pitch. Um, but you know, there, there's a there's the commoditization of financial planning happening on one one hand, and then you've got this whole other behavioral coaching and lifestyle planning um, on the other. And how does how do you, and this is, I guess, a question, what do you think the future lies uh, in regards to financial advice if one half is getting commoditized and the other is getting specialized? Yeah, so I feel like there's going to be th- three main business models in the future. There's the, the hugely just bulk scale, really cheap, um, and it's just a volume game. Then there's going to be the other side where traditionally it was just about like they might have been selling one product. It could have been insurance products. They could have been selling investment products and they're going to diversify and just start selling more and more different products to basically go, all right, we're going to be the multi conglomerate. And then the third one, which I feel like all IFAs really need to play in is this mega niche industry where you are offering one experience it could be you're working purely with lawyers or it could be working with um like for us we're working sort of like these 30 to 36 year old females who um, are high performing and um they want more out of life so you've got to go that micro niche and in that area you can play the price like you can you can charge premium for that but in the other two business models like we're not going to be able to compete in that space anymore and i feel like if your business model is there you're going to be done very, very soon um, because how can you compete with those huge companies which are offering uh, pretty much what you're offering but better and cheaper? And if you're saying that we're different because we do relationships, that's just run of the mill these days. Like everyone's in the relationship business. You've got to be offering so something so special and unique to the type of people you want to be working with. Brett Evans, who um, he's a yeah, Queensland-based advisor he's become very well known uh in the industry for doing expat advice and Mm -hmm. um and he he drops some some few uh you know high quality pieces of information in the facebook group that we have but um one thing he said the other day really just struck me as being super insightful and it was someone who was opening their business and that, okay, this is, this is what I'm going to do. Thanks for the support so far. I've lost so much on the group. What are the things that I should pay attention to? What do you, what is, what is the key thing I should pay attention to? And he said one line, everyone had like all this advice. He had one line. It was pick your audience, outsource everything else. And I was mm-hmm. like, wow, that just, the clarity that he has, uh, I thought was phenomenal. And, you know, I've been going through this concept, like he, I've been going through that particular line in my head quite a bit. And I, I, I realize we're all, 
we're all actually just media companies, right? And we don't need to create our own platform. We don't need to create a news.com.au, for example, because Facebook and LinkedIn, mostly LinkedIn, LinkedIn allows you to open up a company page and immediately start producing content. So, so you're a media yep. company, you, you have zero tech cost, zero. There's zero tech build. So you don't need to know anything about tech because it's all there for you. Um, and then it's your job just to do a couple of things. Talk about what's interesting to you and then talk about what you're an expert in. And that's going to draw the attention of people that are educated and are ready to get services off you. Um, and then it's your job just to make sure that you're working with the best partners to execute on proper financial advice. And, and to hear you then say to micro niche it, then, I mean, if, if you're saying this, Brett's saying this, I mean, they're two people that I really respect in financial advice. So that's got to mean something. Yeah. And a niche isn't like millennials were a niche when we first started because everyone was like working with baby boomers. It's not anymore. Like we can't be saying we work with millennials. Like that's not a niche. Like now, so we have identified that, yeah, ours is this, like we have a full avatar and she's a particular age and she's in this particular state of her life and she's earning this amount of money. Like uh, she likes Lululemon, all these different things. So psychographics and demographics. So have making sure that like, there's the demographic part, which is just the run of the mill. What are they earning? And then there's the psychographics, which is what are they into? What are they passionate about? How do you characterize these type of people? Yeah. And, and how, I mean, how do you, so I, I, in, my, in my mind, just using something like a LinkedIn platform is so effective. Um, what do you have to say about, uh, old school snail mail. Do you, do you, do you do any of this sort of stuff? We don't do any at all. Okay. I did read an interesting article that it's apparently coming back and getting some results. Yes. Uh, but the challenge is, is can you measure them? Um, so with digital meat um, marketing, you can measure it all. And yes, the costs may have gone up, but if you've got proper funnels, which aren't leaking, then you can still capture a huge return on investment. And that's something we're working on. Like we're still got very leaky funnels and we're trying to like just plug the holes and work out, all right, how do we go to the next level? Yeah. Do you think, um, do you think the tools and the software, the tech, I should say, do you think the tech that advisors are use that advisors are using is going to change in the, in the short to medium term? And, and what are the big differences uh, in tech that you're using now compared to five years ago i do i do believe they need to change because they need to change that's the the biggest thing so <laughs> we still don't have any financial planning software which works for us um we're still using wow google sheets to actually do any modeling and everything like that just because they're all designed for baby boomers um, and retirement like we're not really talking about retirement and so we're using other technologies to make it efficient. Where I think we're going to see the big changes is we're going to be using more like robo advisors as part of our business model. So rather than seeing robo advisors being our competitor, I see them as actually just being a greater executor of the investments that we're already doing. So we'll be a add on to robo advisors. And if I, did launch in America, that's what I'd be doing. I'd be partnering with a betterment or a wealth front or something like that and saying like, all right, great. You've done this optimization. We're going to be the human element on the other side. Yeah. And it's almost like augmented re reality. Uh, so virtual reality is putting yourself in a whole another position. Augmented reality is how do you use what's happening already there and enhance it with some technology. And I feel like that's going to be the advisor space in the future because the, the consumer demands it. So we just had an interesting experience with a member who uh, had expressed concern with us. And this is the important part. This is a separate story of how don't make assumptions of why someone's not happy with you because you often don't know. Um, go ask them. So we thought it was about us, but what they had actually um, lost trust in is the, the privacy and 
um, having all this information across all these different product providers and they're like, we just want to do this internally. And I see that now because the technology, it is a representation of us. So even though it wasn't us, it was the company that had some errors of the admin, they see it as an extension of us. So we've got to get very, very good at managing the technology providers and the platform providers and product providers to ensure that they represent how we want to work with our consumer. Yeah, wow. And, and I guess that's kind of a thing with AMP advisors as well because even though AMP advisors... And I belonged to the, the extended universe of AMP when I was an advisor. I was uh, Hill Ross, which uh, originally well, when I joined, they had very different um, reporting structures. But by the time I'd left, uh, w- we had the same GM and it was, wasn't great. Um, but th- just simply having an AMP product now, right? Let's say if you're even in, let's say, AMP flexi super super easy balance which is you know like 50 basis points Mm -hmm. right it's really it's it's cheap but just being associated with AMP right now simply because uh, they didn't turn the fees off on you know a couple of hundred clients for a couple of months which was rebated but they told everyone it was an accounting error or something and you know and so because all that happened uh, oh, and I guess a couple other things like, you know, they, well, let's not get into the whole. Yeah, it's just are you sure it. you want to go down the path? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, but um, you know, they got into a bit of trouble and then, but all, like that wasn't the advisor. That wasn't the advisor. Right. But they're associated with that brand so much that they're guilty by association. So you're saying it actually extends beyond just the finance, uh, the, the, the financial product as well. You're saying that even the technology that's used is a representation. End to end. And uh, the, the, especially the young, younger consumer now has such low trust levels of large companies. And we've seen that with what's happened with Facebook. So now they're, they're starting to go, well, well, what's happening with my data? Like, can I feel safe? And that's where that, the, like the wow customer experience is so important early on because you get a little bit wrong, they just lose trust with you. And then it doesn't matter what you do in the future. They're just like, oh, another company we can't trust. Mm, that's a really good point. So, I mean, well, here's a difficult question. Like, what do you do? One, you've got to communicate really transparently if anything goes wrong. Like, you have to, like be on the front foot. You don't want them to find out. You want them to find out from you. So really telling them and letting them know, um, being really strict on who you operate with and who you work with. And it's, it's easier. Like I love Brett Evans focus. That line was tremendous. Yeah. But you can't just, it's almost like outsource it and make sure you, you manage it. Like you've got to check yeah. everything and making sure that it's working and it represents the brand. And that's where I believe it comes back to, I love what you said about the media company. I I believe in that as well, but it's like you're a branding and media company. You've first got to get the brand right. You've got to know what you stand for, what you're willing to tolerate. Um, Because some companies you are willing to tolerate things because you're playing a cheaper play. Um, So work out where you are on that spectrum and then go pick people who can work in those areas and then manage them. Like you have to be on them and if you don't have something which you're not enjoying about them, you have to have the uncomfortable conversation as soon as possible. And that's, that's something which I'm working on myself is like every day I write, what is the uncomfortable conversation I need, need to have today? Cause there's always one, there's always one with someone. Yeah. Uh, to, today it's my accountants. That's what I'm doing yeah. after this. Yeah. Oh man. Talk to me about that. God. Um, I, yeah, personally I suck at, uh, uncomfortable conversations and which is such a weird trait for someone involved in financial advice because we ask uncomfortable questions all Mm -hmm. the time i mean not like so few people know more intimate details about other people's life than a financial planner um and that and that all it's still it still actually really surprises me the level of emotional input or the emotional uh, intelligence, I guess, that an advisor needs 
And you don't learn about that at all until there's someone crying in front of you and you go, mm-hmm. you know, like for the first time you go, Oh shit. Like I was not prepared for this. And then, you know, you go on and, and, and it all, it all begins to make sense. Um, and that's where the value is added. That's true yeah. value is added in those emotional moments. And this is where I believe the current, it's great what's happening in the financial advice industry with the improved uh, advisor qualifications and training, but they're not addressing the real, they're not addressing that like, like how do you actually communicate with someone who's in a challenging position? How do you challenge them? How do you interpret their body cues to know what's really going on? That doesn't, that isn't taught in the education program. That's why we've launched the coaching academy because we're, we need that for our own business, uh, for our own coaches in our business. How do we teach those side of things? And it comes with practice, but what about the first three, four years of the clients that you're working with when you weren't trained in that? Like they're not getting as good as quality as someone who's a bit more experienced. So that's something where we need to address uh, the change in the industry. And it's similar to like the everyday consumer Everything we do in life comes back to money somehow, but we don't get taught that in schools. It's basically, I oh, get all this education and then first day you're earning whatever your paycheck is, $100,000 a year, go go into this world and good luck. Um, <laughs> and, and look at all the problems that come back because of our poor relationship with money. And that's, that's what I'm passionate about talking about in the world now. It's not about uh, making more money. It's how to have a better relationship with money. Yeah, that's a really good way to put it. Um, how's this? So, uh, I, I, quite a wealthy gentleman that I know. Uh, he recently retired. He was a very successful guy. Recently retired, and I catch up with him every now and again because uh, he's got a, some really good insights. And uh, I, I know for a fact that he is like, like so many people, not enjoying retirement. Right. Especially, especially older older guys that uh, have you know these powerful positions where everyone's waiting on them, and then they mm-hmm. then then there's no reason to get up at six a.m. on the Monday, right? And then compound over one month, six month, a year, it has a really big effect on these guys' psyches. And so now I'm just not in a position because uh, I don't know him that well to to tell him that he needs a new financial planner. But I was talking about it with. Uh, with a buddy of mine who uh, actually it's Ray Jaramas, one of the co-founders here at XY. He's done a psychology degree. And I said to Ray, I said, I wish I could just tell him to go talk to you because he doesn't need better money management right now. Like he needs to be in a conservative asset base. that's going to protect him for the next 40 years. Sure. But uh, he needs help with dealing with the emotions of retiring. And, and I guess that's like, you, you don't hear that before you start in advice and before you have an advisor, before you know anything about financial advice, you don't realize that that's the conversation that advisors are having about their clients. It is, how is my client emotionally handling this uh, life transition phase? in their life? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And- and that's where we need to be heading. That's where, like, I know we've always focused on. And unfortunately, people aren't thinking that, both the industry and the consumer. The, the consumer is still thinking, oh, I just need to make more money. And yeah. the reason why we're seeing so many old, old white men, like rising suicide rates, depression rates, because they've measured their success by the amount of money they've had, the amount of authority they've had in their businesses, and this constant progression that works while you're on that path. But as soon as you're off that path, if you've been measuring success by that metric, you're set up for failure. Um, so we need to be more thinking about continuously, are we, are we living a life in line with our purpose, our values, uh, and be focusing on more, focusing on intentions which aren't just defined by achievements or success or uh, really just uh, superficial things that we're validating ourselves by. It needs to be more about wholeness. Man, that's, that's, that's tough, right? Like, I mean, in the, in the age of Instagram where you've got uh, depression 
you know, skyrocketing, especially uh, amongst teenagers, especially amongst teenage mm-hmm. women, where uh, we, we are 100% telling the, or, you know, our society is 100% telling everyone that if you aren't the most ripped guy or the most gorgeous girl, that you will not live a successful and fantastic life. And, um, man, like, what, what are you seeing in your your niche that you work with, what, what are some classic um, transitions or lifestyle problems or, 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 or issues with wholeness that you're seeing frequently? What are, what are some? Decisions around having children or not. So there's a uh, lot of people now questioning whether that's right. And we are the first people who have given them permission to even think that way um, and share that that may not be right for you. Um, conventional marriage like i think marriage is up in the cards do we combine finances um the the job life like do do i keep chasing that promotion or do i just enjoy uh work that's purposeful even the concept of retirement like that's not spoken about really like they've been trained that way and then we have language chats with them and they're like I don't want to retire. I just want to be doing purposeful work and doing good work and having more breaks. So we like to talk about sabbaticals in that way more. Yeah. And then it's, it can be anything. It can be living in one place. There's, there's so many different ways now. And I believe that's when we talk about our niche, that's what we're about. Like our brand is about making the, the conversations that you want to have. It's okay to have them uh, rather than suppressing them. And that's why we'll be quite vocal and share our own experiences to make people connect with it and go, you know what, that's, that's happened to me as well. Far out, man. And, and, uh, and like, let, let's ask a, a pretty scary question, but are you, are you finding, because again, I, I mean, that is so, and, and I hate to use such a tired word, but it's pretty accurate here. Like that is so progressive. Are you finding success with this? We are. However, we've identified that we need to change our model to catch up on this as well. So uh, our current model is we're rejecting too many people right. and we're not capturing. So people are dropping out in so many different ways because our business model only allows us to capture certain people. Yep. So we're trying, to, we're trying to think in a way now where it's like, well, how do we, how do we meet those person's needs? Because they've to, to come through a funnel, they're clearly in, like they, ne- they have a need that needs to be filled and they have a desire. And I feel like we're letting those people down at the moment by not, not being able to help them. So that's where I feel like digitization and even just the things like you're doing, like we're now starting to do Facebook lives and everything a lot more like that's a way you can help people. Yeah. Um, digitizing what we do, um, having online courses. So we're, we're trying to work out how do we catch capture those people. And it's one of our challenges is, uh, People come to us for something and then what they get later on, they tell us, oh, that wasn't what we actually got. We got so many different things. Like you've come like our, um, like our point of contact to be able to have these challenging conversations to, to share almost like what the, the pastor used to be or the priest. Yeah. They used to be able to now can come and, um, and share huh. with us their, their deepest things and we're accepting to that. So now in a branding issue, we need to work out how do we sell uh, what we actually have in a way where meets people meets them where they're at. So yeah. we, we capture them and then we mold them in our way. We still haven't nailed that yet. Wow, man. I, yeah. Funnily enough, I actually for a little while in my youth, I, I kind of got brought up in, in religion for a little while. And um, I remember, I remember what it was like to, to, you know, have those pastoral conversations and, you know, I haven't really had one of those in, in, a, in a hell of a long time, but like, I remember, I remember, you know, like if you sort of stripped away the inaccuracies of the core mm-hmm. beliefs, <clears throat> uh, no offense out there, um, then uh, you, you, you would, that would probably be really helpful. Um, I would imagine. And that's kind of cool that you're taking financial advice and really wrapping it up into life advice. Wow. Really in, in explicitly so um so i just want to quickly and people are craving it people are craving it yeah, right. like they are craving it so in eo entrepreneurs organizations the largest peer-to-peer group of entrepreneurs in the world uh, minimum 
entry requirements, you have to like have a million dollar business turnover and then there's values and it's, it's hard to get into, but it's the most incredible thing. Uh, mm. And I'm president of the Colorado chapter. It is awesome. all built on this and it's all about sharing. They call it like the five percenters, the five top 5% and the bottom 5% in all areas of your life that no one, you can't, don't feel comfortable talking about it. And the relief when we like, we have new members come in, we run these test drives and you should just see their face. They're like, I haven't shared this with anyone. And they're just like this weight of their, of the, off their shoulders drops away. So wow. if you can find a way to do this for people, even as a friend, yeah. um, it just, it's incredible what you'll find out from people. Man, like, okay. Yeah. This sort of sounds like a layup for a plug for your course. So <laughs> I got to be careful how I, uh, how I articulate this question, but how did you learn? Like, cause my question was originally, how does one learn? And, and I do want to get to that in another second, but how yep. did you go about learning all this stuff? So I'm an avid reader and, uh, and huge studier of humans. Like I love just observing people. So um, I've done a number of things. So an army officer. So being an army officer, you observe a lot of people in different dynamics and they have hierarchy and have ways for you to communicate. Uh, being a financial advisor and looking after very like wealthy affluent people at a young age, got to see a lot of things. Mm. Um, I've done a positive psychology masters. Um, wow just practicing these things. Um, and EO probably has been the greatest trainer of all of them. Um, cause wow. I've, I've seen behind the scenes of the most successful people. And when you see that, you start learning like we're all, we're all pretty similar. Like we've all got, yeah. we're all fragile. We've all got our own demons and yeah. what we all want is connection. Human connection is what we're craving and the connected world is making us more disconnected than ever. Yeah. Far out, man. So, all right, well, let, let's get to chat about because you're, you've been doing these uh, coaching academies for a little while now um, and I'll, I'll be a guest presenting at, at, um, at the upcoming one. It was on the Goldie. Yeah. Uh, it's now moved to my backyard, Sydney. So it's uh, the 6th to the 8th of May. So that's what, in three weeks or three or four weeks? Yeah, it's three weeks. Yeah, three weeks, I think. Awesome. So super looking forward to, to that. Um, talk to us about what's going to be there, how to get tickets, that kind of stuff. Yep. So it's, it's going to be three days. We, it's a very focused on how to become a better coach. Um, yep. we, we talk about how to advise millennials, but it's a lot about how to be a better coach. And you don't even have to be working with millennials for this to be related to you. Like it's, it's live practicing. And we, we go into, positive psychology we go into behavioral coaching and we will teach something we we then actually go and apply it and then we come and share with each other so we're getting peer feedback so mm. it's a very iterative process because I, I love saying that like the greatest way to learn something is to teach it so we yeah. get people within the group to interact and it's tickets uh, on our website there's a wealth enhancers coaching academy page uh, we've actually so there's a couple of things we've done so we reduced the price a lot for this one uh, yep. traditionally it was fifteen thousand. yeah it is <laughs> we've lowered it no we just realized we were knocking once again we were limiting people like we'd have some young advisors who come out and we're just like i just can't afford that and i was like you know yeah. what that that's we're missing what we're trying to do there so we've lowered it down to it's around seven thousand dollars or something yeah and um i'm not sure if we're going to do this again to tell you the truth uh, I have just, you're talking about focus. Yeah. We've identified that we're, we're trying to stretch ourselves too thin again. We've been trying to help the industry, yes. but it takes us off, off our own focus. So yeah. this may be the last one. Um, we've done five of them and right. they've been incredible. And then we're just going to go back to focusing on our developing our own coaches. So if you want to get involved, I'm going to, you're, I'm going to give it all. I'll help you grow your company. I'll uh, set you up for success. I'll give you playbooks, which have, we've spent hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars to create. Um, and you'll come away with a successful business and, and you'll be part of my, my tribe and I'll help you going on. Um, and it's not, we're not trying to pay scarcity, but I, I just had to, we were having a chat as a team and I'm like, do we really want to keep doing this? Um, yeah. So yeah, oh, man, so it'll be I'm, incredible. I'm, I hope you hope people get part of it. Yeah, man. Well, um, I know what that's like. I know what it's like to feel like you're doing too much and, and, and to also feel like 
you're doing something for <laughs> non-commercial reasons, you know what I mean? Like out of a desire to, to help and, and this industry does need so much help. So man, like I, the X, Y is a perfect example of that. So mm-hmm. I know exactly what you mean. And um, man, I'm super pumped. Uh, it's, it's like a truly, it's, a, it's an honor to, to be presenting, um, you know, on how to identify you know, what, what message that you want to send and then how to scale that message out. And, and that's really dear to my heart because if an advisor can just sort of productize their personality and their skill set and then send it as far and wide as possible, then you're just going to end up working with the people that you like. So, um, exactly. Yeah. And if you can't get value from the three days of just being around us two, yeah. um, there's, they're like, we're living in a house together. Like it's immersive. Um, it's, it's a fun experience. Awesome, man. Well, um, definitely there'll be a, a link in the description. Thank you heaps for uh, putting some time aside to come on and chat today. And uh, yeah, man, I'll, uh, I'll catch up with you in a couple of weeks. Love it, buddy. Can't wait. All right, cool. Thanks for doing great work. Cheers, man. Bye. Cheers. Bye.